Hello there, my name is Patricia King and I'm serving you as your host today on Supernatural Life. And with me I have a special friend, actually we've been getting to know each other, Brenda. This is Brenda Crouch and Brenda, you are a powerful minister of the gospel. You're a speaker in different women's meetings and venues and churches and also an author. And you've authored a book called Fight Forward which is our topic today. We're gonna to talk about identity theft and how important yeah. it is that we know our identity in Christ. And I wanna thank you so much for, for writing that book. Mm -hmm. I read it and I was, uh, I was touched. I actually mm -hmm. couldn't put it down mm -hmm. um, because I was so moved. Because you are a woman who is in the limelight. You are the wife of uh, Paul Crouch Jr. And of mm -hmm. course you're both between, you know, before many audiences and that. Right. And so a lot of times people don't know the story behind yeah. those that are on a platform. And when I read your story, it broke my heart. Parts of it broke my mm -hmm. heart. But it also was so refreshing to see what God did, and what God can do for anyone because he loves everyone Amen. so much. So could you Amen. share some of your story with us? Oh, yeah. And thank you for having me here today, Patricia. It's oh, so good to be with you. It's and, an honor. And you're just your endorsement meant a lot to me for the book. You know, uh, I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, what most people thought was perfect. And in many ways, I thought I came from the perfect family. And I was taught performance at a young age. You know, we, my family was out singing for Jesus. And uh, I was the little soul winner all through school. And my mom taught me to love the Lord. But there was brokenness in also in my family line and, and generational things on my father's side of the family that came out of uh, some deep abuses. And so, uh, you know, my father suffered some things in his own identity. And there was a point in his life when he went through a very dark, dark season and he was very angry. And there were issues. There was a lot of uh, poor dynamics there between him and my mother. And because of his anger, he took those abuses out on me. And so I suffered from childhood sexual abuse at about the age of eight. And mm -hmm. I did what is a classical thing, and uh, psychologists will, can, will tell you that if in the studies they've done, is that often children will split off and there's an emotional response to protecting the psyche. You know, we're just so fragile and children are so fragile. Yeah. And what happened for me is I buried that memory because of the trauma and the type of abuse that it was. And I buried that memory, which then later in my life came out through dreams. And I believe that God used these, uh, you could call them prophetic dreams. They were dreams that were repetitive over and over. And in these dreams, I felt so terrible about myself. And why didn't, why didn't I stop that in the dream? And my father was in every dream. And I began to wonder, what, were, what are those dreams? What do they mean? And I knew there was something deep, deep down below the surface that I wasn't ready to really examine yet. Until I reached uh, my late 30s or 40s and, and at that time of my life I thought I want to try to talk to my father about this maybe he has a clue he's in every dream he probably knows something and when I spoke to him about it he uh, really didn't know how to go there he could not go there and you know I think that because uh, when you have a fractured soul Right. and you carry all this junk inside of you. You're not really in an honest place before God. You may love God and you want to serve him, but you have these things that have bound you up. Yeah. And so often, you know, we're so broken, we can become perpetrators of abuse and then we're ashamed and we have shame uh, right. compiled upon shame. And this was a generational thing for me. I walked into abusive marriages. I had two very abusive marriages with very mentally ill people. And so what I went through, you know, I looked at my, my life at one time, Patricia, and I thought, I'm done. I'm destroyed. It's, yeah. it's over for me. And which is a lot of what led me into the second one, thinking that I was really nothing and, and I was damaged goods. And, you know, it was God's grace reached into my abyss, into my pit, my taboo place. And he pulled me out of that wreckage. And it was a process of him teaching me how to abide in him, what his grace was about mm. to let go of the performance and to learn how to walk in his grace and his healing. And little by little, he's brought me to a place of understanding who I am in Christ alone and I no longer need to be the perfect person. 
you know, right. all those images had to go uh, to find my real authentic voice. Sure. And did your father ever come to terms with this? Were you ab able to, you know, confront yes. it in a way where he would agree? Yes. And, you know, this was something I committed to prayer because after a while I knew. I knew that it was my father. And I, so I said, God, you know, for my father's sake and my sake, for there yeah. to be healing, let this come out and let it be uh, let there be forgiveness. And so I began to pray over it for a couple of years. And then my father became very ill uh, with a, uh, a lung disease that was idiopathic. They didn't know where it came from. There was no cure. Mm -hmm. And I believe that he carried these issues so deep in his body that it made him sick. But on his deathbed, he looked at me and I opened the, the book out with that chapter and he confessed and he asked my forgiveness. And wow. it was in a room full of family and I knew immediately that he was ready to step into the light. And he had trouble forgiving himself, but I was able to pray with him and lead him to that place of accepting the forgiveness that Jesus' blood offers so us, beautiful. no matter where we are, how deep in sin we are. So beautiful. I want to really encourage all of you that are watching because I do believe that there's a number of you that are identifying with this testimony might not be every aspect of it, but many aspects of it. And abuse in any area can oftentimes have the same effect and it causes you to lose identity and puts you mm -hmm. in a place where you're so vulnerable, you don't know how to live your life or what to do with it. And even if you were abused, let's say by your father or by someone that you know, and they were never able to come to terms with it, they were never able to admit it to you, you can still be free. Amen. You can still be free. These are very painful issues, but Jesus is bigger. And you've known his bigness in this. Oh, oh time yeah. and time again. In Incredible. your book, Fight Forward, mm -hmm. there are so many keys, but you share your whole journey. And mm -hmm. it's like, when I was reading it, I thought this is so true, what people go through in these cycles. Mm -hmm. It really is. And, and, you know, it set me up for those abusive relationships because <laughs> as a child, you know, we're so dependent on that person who provides for us. We need their blessing. We need their provision. Uh, we need their love. And so there's a confused message, even if it's to the subconscious mind, that uh, you don't understand that love doesn't always do these things. And so it takes, you know, really a work of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and the, the mentoring of those who have gone before you, who can help you to almost do your own autopsy and really learn what are boundaries, you know, and, and they're, that they're okay. Right now, of course, there's the, the Me Too movement, mm -hmm. which is a significant voice for people who have been hurt. Right. Do you feel it's justified? You know, I think that Me Too, uh, it, it was the beginning of something that needed to happen. And I really feel like my book uh, and my story is is really taking, uh, it, it's the answer to Me Too. Because, you know, we can get stuck in just being angry and we draw these lines in the sand based on what we cannot tolerate. And, and you know, there, this demonic stuff shouldn't be tolerated, but there is a place of grace that the Lord can bring you to that is so incredible. When he changes you from the inside out, you walk in a different power and you're no longer a victim. You know, Jesus was not a victim right. on the cross. Jesus gave himself. And isn't that the heart of Christ in us to teach us how to walk in that same being able to lay my life down for a friend this is where i was when i was at that place yeah. where i could tell my daddy you know what i've forgiven you and now you need to forgive yourself and believe that jesus forgives you right and so you know i think that we can get stuck being angry and bitter and that's going to destroy us if that's yeah. all we do but the scriptures tell us to not be overcome with evil, but to overcome evil with good. Mm -hmm. And that is the fight, Patricia. That is the yeah. fight forward. And I do agree that it's important that we bring these issues to light yes. because they're justice issues. They need to be right. dealt with. But if we go mm -hmm. into offense, yeah. offense never empowers you. Forgiveness exactly. does. Forgiveness is what gives you power. Absolutely. Now, um, I wanted to ask you also because 
In your book, you share um, about your codependency and the patterns mm -hmm. that led you into it. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, you know, a desperation to survive, I think. Mm -hmm. But do you feel like um, that is something that's very normal with abuse and, and with, you know, covering up or not knowing what to do with the situation? I do, and I think that codependency is often misrepresented and misunderstood even um, in society. And if you look at our society right now, our culture is is just infiltrated with narcissism. Yeah. And this is a problem that's even penetrated the church. I know you've written about this subject. Yeah. This is something I've lived very closely with uh, in many relationships throughout my life. And, you know, I, I think that it's something that can, we can become so self-driven and, and um focused on our pain that we don't understand um, how to get outside of that. Right. And right. so, you know, it's, I, I really believe that it, in, in the, the issue of identity, that what God wants to do is to teach us the difference. When, when we're being hijacked through our wounds, the enemies come in to give you a counterfeit. Yeah. And so in my case, what I did was I started to project things that I thought was be, would be more lovable. You know, there was an image that I tried to create. This is me. I tried to believe it myself. And those things, even though they weren't necessarily evil things, I had to understand those were counterfeit things. And what God wanted to do was a deep, deep surgery in my life and be able to transform me from the inside out so that I would then learn what my authentic voice was in the identity of Christ in me. Right, so good, Brenda. I really want to encourage you to get Brenda's book, Fight Forward, because there's keys in it. and. In the sharing of her journey, this is what I found, is that you find yourself in it, and in the journey, you can find yourself being healed. And I really believe this is gonna be an important tool for many of you that find yourself in this same place. Many of you may be covering up with different, you know, shame issues or doing exactly what Brenda just said, you know, wanting to make yourself more lovable, only to find out that it's failing. Mm -hmm. But there is freedom for you. There is absolute freedom for you in Jesus. And when we come back, we're going to hear more about that and how you can attain that freedom, how you can be free in Jesus. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back. This is an amazing conversation that we're having about identity and, and, and holding on and letting God heal us of things that have robbed it in the mm -hmm. past. And Brenda, again, author of Fight Forward, mm -hmm. thank you so much for the contribution of this mm -hmm. book. I want to talk a little bit about what's going on in the church because I think mm -hmm. abusive situations definitely take place within the world. Mm -hmm. And there's all kinds of cover-ups and different ways that people handle their pain in the world. But <clears throat> you don't often expect it to be in the church, right? right? And yet it is in the church, it isn't is. it? It is. And sadly, you know, we think that the church is this perfect house of uh, people that have, you know, were washed in the blood and it's over and it's done. But, you know, the, the truth is, is we are all a work in progress and working out the salvation that we have been given in our, our own lives. So that comes with different degrees of revelation. Um, you know, and, and I really believe that through the woundings and especially generational woundings, Patricia, when, when there have been abuses within family yeah. systems, um, uh, societal woundings, oppression, things like right. this is what holds us back. And the enemy comes in with these lies as early as our childhood to try to feed us um, a different narrative. One is you're not good enough, you know, mm -hmm. all, of course, those things and put shame upon us as an identity. Shame is huge. It's right? huge. And, and it's something I battled my entire life. Right. And to come free from shame, I mean, it's a miracle that I can sit here today and say, I'm shame free. Right. I no longer am bound to that thing that once kept me from being able to even speak out mm -hmm. or because what I had to do is I had to perform which was my counterfeit. Right. It was my alter ego that I found gave me the, the courage to get right. on a platform and I felt empowered. And this is the, the temptation. People are looking for uh, identity through platform right now. They're looking- and Especially through social media. Yes. It enhances it yes. all, all the more. Children yes. can become very well known at a young age because exactly. of social media. 
Exactly, and that, that provides us with a platform and these tempting tools to be able to feel empowered. And you know, there's a, there can be a false sense of power that comes with that, and we have to really be careful because as Christians, you know, we're not gonna change the world and how they think, but if we are in Christ, what does that mean? Right. You know, Paul, the apostle, I believe it was in Galatians where he, he talks about being circumcised or uncircumcised. He said, those are not the things that are going to gain you any merit with Christ. The only thing that gains you merit is faith that is done in love. Yeah. What is love? Love is the opposite of the thing that, that binds us up and, right. and pulls us into fear. And so what I had to learn is how to walk that out. And it was the Holy Spirit who then brought me the right people into my life to mentor, to help guide me, and the, the tools to be able to examine my heart before Him. You right. know, and, and there's a scripture that talks about how that when we stand before Him with our face unveiled, isn't that a moment of truth yeah. where we say, okay, Lord, I'm going to take it all off. I'm taking off the mask. Wow. And I'm going to stand before you, the person that I don't even like to see in the mirror, the person oh. I, I have rejected all of my life. I'm going to stand in the mirror of your glory. And that is where I'll be transformed. And that is where I find out who I am as love. And I'm enough because of his love because of oh. his acceptance and the blood of Jesus. Just as you were sharing that, I felt that there's some in our mm -hmm. audience right now who are feeling mm -hmm. that same thing and they connected with that. And you're saying, yeah, I don't like myself. I, I, I look in the mirror and I do not like the person I see in the mirror, yeah. but God does and you can bring who you mm -hmm. are before him and find his love and find the way he sees you and in that discover who you are. And one of the things I, I love, Brenda, about you is that you pursued mm -hmm. your wholeness and we can't give up Amen. because in your journey, there was times that you, you mm -hmm. could have given up yeah. and just thrown in the towel, but you did not give up. You mm -hmm. continued to pursue and the grace of God was there mm -hmm. to help you. It was, and you know, it is a fight and it is not easy. And, and it doesn't happen with a magic wand and you know, down at the altar or with one little prayer. This is a journey that we are walking out with Christ and just learning to abide in Him, knowing that here's what released me is knowing, you know what, I'm not perfect and I'm so broken. Lord, I'm so broken here. A a accepting and understanding and acknowledging sure. all that I had done that had gotten me to where I was. Yep. It was the first step of coming out of my victory victim mindset, victim identity. Wow. So I had to first be accountable to God. He taught me that codependency is a form of idolatry because you know what? I wanted something that that other person, that abuser was giving me. And isn't that what we see in our society? Wow. So God was teaching me one step at a time. And there were days when my only strength came from just praising him, mm -hmm. learning how to praise him through the hard stuff. And he would fill me with such a supernatural strength and power and peace that was the fruit of his spirit. And mm -hmm. I didn't understand it, but I began to be clothed. It's a lot like the, the vision of Ezekiel, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the valley of yeah. dry bones. And I just see that for today, for those who feel so for broken. so many. Mm. Yeah. Brenda, in the church, and I know that you've seen this, and I think most of us have that have been in, in leadership, mm -hmm. and you pray for you know <laughs> people that are going through things, but I think one of the biggest traps in the church is that there's this expectation yeah. that you are to be a certain way. So outwardly, right. you are trying to conform, but inwardly you're falling apart, mm -hmm. and you don't give yourself permission to just be. Yeah and to deal with those things. And I had a phone call from a friend of mine. She's in her 40s now, but she just had a memory resurface mm -hmm. that when she was a teenager, she was in church, she was a fairly new Christian, and the pastor sexually abused her mm. on Saturday nights, and she would be made to go to church Sunday mornings and have to sit wow. there and watch her abuse her in the yeah. pulpit. Mm -hmm. And so it was like week after week, she had to deal with this. and I. Oh my goodness, my heart broke when I heard that. But what had happened is that she she didn't know how to cope with it. So right. she did as what happened to you and many others. She disassociated yeah. and she just went on. It wasn't until like 20 years later, mm. over 20 years later now, she's remembering the whole thing, it's coming up. But now she's able to be healed. Yeah. But before the healing, there's brokenness. There's yes. like, 
the trauma mm -hmm. of even remembering it again. Can you address that? Because I know that mm -hmm. that's a hard thing that when you've buried something, yeah. you you just don't want to bring it up. You don't right. want to look at it, right? Yeah. But and it's then suddenly you're faced healing. with this reality. Yeah. And it's like, well, what do I do with this? And you know, in my case, my father, I had made him my hero. And I, uh, you know, we bonded through music and performance and all these things. And so suddenly I was having to look at the truth of my father's brokenness, the truth of my brokenness, and, and not just go through the process of forgiveness, but to actually acknowledge all of right. this. And then to be able to come to the place of telling my story, right. that took a work of God. Wow. But I think that, you know, if we understand that God made us, we're such complex beings, and he made us with these beautiful minds that that compartmentalize information for a reason. And, and a lot of that's to protect us. And I just trusted that it was God's perfect timing that had brought this to the table, that mm -hmm. I could now, with his help, and by His grace, yep. examine it. And I was determined, Patricia, that I was going to do it honestly, and that we were going to come out of this changed, and at least I would. Yep. And I know now, looking back, that everything that the enemy meant for harm in my life, because you know sometimes there's a bullseye on your back mm -hmm. because you have purpose, and he, the enemy wants to quiet, he wants to shut you down and, yep. and stop your voice. but. What God, he meant for evil, God has turned and Absolutely. used for good, not just in my life and my family's, but for the kingdom. Amen. Brenda, I want to thank you mm -hmm. for thank you. telling your story so well. Thank you and so for the, much. And for the courage it took yeah. to do it. Mm. Because so many people are being set free now because of it. Mm. Um, because we, we need to hear, sometimes you feel Amen. all alone in it. You think that you're the only person. You think that you're you're weird, a strange or something yeah. because you've got brokenness. Yeah. But because you were bold to tell your story, now other people can be set free. Amen. And I know that in the different venues where you minister, mm -hmm. that there's so much freedom that comes, so much healing yes. that comes because of your ministry. And that would have never happened mm. if you hadn't taken what was a painful thing in mm -hmm. your life and turn it into fulfilling a purpose. Thank you, Jesus. And I think that that's what's going to happen to many of you yeah. that are hurting right now. Mm -hmm. And you're listening to this program and you're thinking, oh my goodness, this is like giving me hope because I just felt so messed up. I thought there was no hope for me. But when you look at Brenda mm -hmm. and where she is today and what she's doing today to help others because she took courage and was able to face the issues and find her true identity, take back what the enemy stole from her, you can do the same. God is not a respecter of persons. So I believe great hope is being imparted to you right now, and I'm excited about that. Mm, We're gonna take amen. a break right now. We'll be right back to minister to you. Well, welcome back. I wanna read a couple of verses out of Psalm 139. I just think it's so beautiful because it shares about God's intimate um, acquaintance with you and his commitment to you. And it says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you understand my thought from afar. You scrutinize my path and my lying down, and you're intimately acquainted with all my ways. Mm. God knows everything that you've been through, absolutely everything, and he knows the path to your freedom. You don't have to be ashamed to come before him or afraid to come before him because he's been there and his arm is outstretched to you. So take that hand because healing is on its way for every single one of you that have had situations that need to be healed. And we were talking about just in the break, Brenda, about how there's so many options that we can take, right? Mm -hmm. um, people don't have to take the option of healing and surrendering, because it's a journey. Yes. And it's painful at times yeah, dealing choice. with those yeah. things. It's a choice, but there's other options. People sometimes take drugs for it, or yeah. you know, they'll, they'll go into denial or whatever, but those mm -hmm. options destroy them. But God's way will give them life. Yes, so do. we want to pray for our people yes. right now, and let's just go into prayer, and if you get anything for them, you know, I just want to encourage you to uh, release that prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm receiving um, something right now for a woman that you were betrayed by your pastor, and your pastor was married, and yet there was some interaction with you that 
uh, you, you and him that brought you into a close relationship. Uh, there's nothing sexual that happened, but there's promises made to you. And then there is betrayal and you're so confused and you feel so much shame. You've broken off that relationship, but you're dealing with the shame. And I believe right now, God is lifting it off of you and just making a path for you to be separated from that situation. I believe there's a woman also that you have lived your life knowing that the call of God is upon you. And I want to encourage you that it is. And God has been with you every step of the way, but you've been leading with your good intentions and you've been trying to prove yourself, not just for God, but for others to see and to recognize. And I wanna just encourage you to settle back and find your rest in Him, to abide in Christ and allow Him to open every door. There's a process you are walking through and the prophetic anointing that is upon you is for purpose, but don't run ahead of Him because He has authored this and He will be the finisher. Oh, what a beautiful mm. word. Well, Lord, we thank you so much thank for you. all that you're doing in our lives. And we're going to contend to live in the identity, Lord, that you have given us so freely. Thank you, Father. And thank you all for joining us today on Supernatural Life. And throughout this next week, you go out and live one, live it big, mm. and we'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Let us know how it impacted you. Send your feedback, testimony or prayer request today or ask Patricia a question for a future program. And don't forget, you can continue growing in the supernatural with our premium e-courses. Connect with us at god.tv Patricia and join us next time for our next episode of Supernatural Life.